Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, share, and restack buttons. Well, is this remarkable or frightening? Or is it both? <laughs> your, your take may be different from mine. I think, well, it's probably both, but it's a very bad idea. And I think that you'll agree with me on that. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this right here. So this is from the Daily Mail. And you may have seen these robots <laughs> that have come out. The Optimus Robot by Tesla and Elon Musk. It says, Elon Musk showcases army of $30,000 Optimus robots designed with to help with household chores, including babysitting your kids... Seems really creepy idea to me. Drawing comparisons to dystopian future depicted in iRobot. So this says Elon Musk has showcased his army of $30,000 Tesla Optimus robots that are designed to help with household chores, prompting people to draw comparisons to a dystopian future depicted in the movie iRobot. In shocking and impressive footage, the humanoid robots were seen stiffly walking in single file across a stage while viewers stood jaw-dropped on the sidelines. Musk attendees could walk up to the Optimus robots who would do things like serve drinks. And there's a number of places online where they're saying these were controlled by other people. All I can say is Elon Musk successfully engineered the landing of a rocket booster <laughs> to return back to Earth and land on the platform from which it was launched. The idea that he could create robots that could perform household tasks doesn't seem so far-fetched. He says, at scale, you should be able to buy an Optimus robot for $20,000 to $30,000. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend. Hopefully, <laughs> many of you watching have enough friends you don't need an Optimus robot to fill in for one of as a friend. But this goes on. It says, the footage goes on to show the human-like bot sitting at a family table, laying with a child, as well as wiping down a kitchen surface and collecting posts. The robot, which is intended for industrial and domestic uses, debuted at AI Day on September 30th after first being announced at AI Day in August 2021. Tesla bots are initially positioned to replace people in repetitive, boring, and dangerous tasks, but the vision is for them to serve millions of households such as cooking, mowing lawns, and caring for the elderly, Musk wrote in an essay published in China Cyberspace magazine. But many social media users are now drawing comparisons to the 2004 sci-fi movie iRobot, set in 2035, after seeing the clip of Musk droids. And this goes on to talk about the plot of that movie, which is very similar to the Terminator film in that, you know, it, these robots which many people are co comparing in likeness to these Tesla robots, are controlled by a centralized AI, and it leads to this revolt against the humans. So we see this idea put forth quite that often, but this is what seeing this idea from coming from Tesla is reminding a lot of people of. And of course, we can see from the movie, here's this angry ro this angry robot that's going to turn on humanity. So it says, Musk in 2022 explained that the android, which will have human-like limbs and features, was deliberately designed that way. The Tesla bot is close to the height and weight of an adult, can carry or pick up heavy objects, walk fast in small steps, and the screen on its face is an interactive interface for communication with people. You may wonder why we designed this robot with legs. Because humanity, or because human society, 
is based on the interaction of a bipedal humanoid with two arms and ten fingers. So if we want a robot to adapt to its environment and be able to do what humans do, it has to be roughly the same size, shape, and capabilities as a human, Musk explained. The Tesla bot, which would be 5 foot 8 and weigh 125 pounds, is set to include the autopilot computer used in the comp company's electric cars, which will allow the humanoid to recognize real-world objects, although the ro robot would have its own customized sensors and actuators. It will also be able to deadlift up to 150 pounds, carry 45 pounds, walk 5 miles per hour, and have human-like hands plus visual sensors giving it the ability, quote, to see. And then we have, again, more images of from iRobot as well as from this Tesla rollout. It says, but just six months ago, the mogul warned a robot uprising could be imminent as he claimed AI will outsmart mankind by as early as the end of the year. Speaking in an interview on X, the Tesla CEO claimed that AI would become more intelligent than the smartest human within two years. And within five years, Musk even predicts that sentient AIs will outnumber humans. Now, if you watched our uh, Prophecy Roundtable back on Tuesday, we talked about this. And guys, there is no sentient AI. AI may approach... Uh, the likeness of or may convince people that it is sentient because it's a very sophisticated algorithm or, or composed or comprised of very sophisticated algorithms that are able to converse and reply to human prompts in such a way that it appears to be thinking or appears to be conscious, but that is simply not the case. <laughs> it's just not. So he says, his claims are based on the observation that an exponential amount of computing power is being turned over to, for AI projects each year. AI is the fastest advancing technology I've seen of any kind, and I've seen a lot of technology, Musk said. AI hardware and computers are coming online dedicated to AI are increasing by a factor of 10 every year if not every six to nine months. And it's hard for our minds to grasp what that means, but that is the very definition of exponential change. But guys, this idea that, you know, iRobot, Terminator, these theses put forward that AI is going to become smarter than human beings, surpass human beings, turn on human beings. We hear this all the time and have long stated that is not the case. You know, these theories, they assume, they make the assumption that AI and humanity remain distinct and separate entities. And that is a false assumption to make, as we're going to look at in just a moment. But again, they make this assumption that we have AI over here and we have humanity over here and they're separate, and that there's no blurring of those lines, there's no melding or merging of AI and humanity. Guys, I've, you know I've long said that is an incorrect assumption, and that will prove these theories of iRobot and the Terminator to be false. AI is not the threat, and we'll mention what the threat is as we go through this. But let's take a look at this article right here from The Hill. So this is an opinion piece that was put out back in December by Zoltan Istvan, who's a prominent transhumanist. I believe he ran for president with a transhumanist platform back in 2016. It's titled, We Should Embrace Transhumanism, Our Survival Could Depend on It. And he goes on to make the case for why 
humanity and AI should not remain distinct and separate entities. He says, the world is changing at a furious pace due to rapid technological advancements, especially those of artificial intelligence. Enhancing human beings through new technology has become a topic of much conversation. Cases of genetic editing often dominate those debates, but the possibility of an enhanced Olympic Games or super soldiers also grab headlines. While some express concerns about the ethical implications and potential risk, advocating for the preservation of natural humanity, there is a compelling case to be made for embracing technological enhancements beyond the means of just improving the human experience, with AI possibly set to pass the intelligence of humans in the next 20 years. Of course, Elon Musk is saying it's going to be two. He says the need to become a stronger, more resilient species has become markedly more important. Trying to keep up with AI via human ex enhancement may be one of the most important activities humans do in the future. Such pursuits shouldn't be frowned upon. Again, this is him speaking, not me. I'm <laughs> just reading the article. He says, human beings have a long history of seeking ways to enhance their abilities, from the development of tools like the Iron Axe to the advent of medical advancements like anesthesia, humans have consistently pursued ways to overcome limitations and improve their quality of life. Technological enhancements like bionic eyes that can use the internet represent a natural progression in this trajectory, allowing us to augment not only our physical capabilities, but also cognitive and emotional capacities. Now guys, this is something we often hear mentioned and transhumanism is this belief that this is the natural progression or trajectory of the human race. Because if you reject the Bible, if you believe in the theory of evolution, of monkeys demand evolution, then it, you'll draw the logical conclusion, well, the next step is this. It's transhumanism. It's enhancing the human body merging with technology to create the next phase, the next step in that evolutionary process of a post-human or a transhuman. I don't agree with that. I'm sure many of you don't as well, but um, this is what many people believe, and, and I believe this will become a predominant belief in the end times, that's my personal belief, is that this is going to be one uh, universally accepted by much of humanity. It says, in the past, one of the primary ethical arguments in favor of technological enhancement was the opportunity to overcome physical limitations for increased well-being. Advancements in prosthetics, for example, have enabled individuals with limb loss to regain mobility and lead normal lives. Other enhancement technologies such as exoskeletons and endoskeletons hold the promise of significantly expanding human physical capabilities, allowing individuals to surpass the limitations imposed by their biological bodies and be competitive with AI-driven robots. And guys, I would encourage you to go read Psalm chapter 2. Oh, wait, verses 1 through 4 when you read this. <laughs> and humanity surpassing the limits imposed by their biological bodies. I believe that it's quite possible that's speaking directly to the sentiment that he's putting forward here. He says, obviously, the quest to keep up with AI in the future is going to require much more than just improving our bodies and an increasingly knowledge-driven society, improving our cognitive abilities is essential. Technological enhancements offer the potential to boost cognitive functions such as memory, attention, and problem-solving skills. Devices like brainwave reading implants could revolutionize education 
allowing individuals to acquire and process information more efficiently. Remember, we've talked about Elon Musk in the past and Neuralink, and they put that out and said, well, the ability is to restore these natural functions that people have lost, such as if you're paralyzed, the ability to use your limbs. If you're blind, the ability to once again see. And then Elon Musk says, well, and I'm going to get one too, right? <laughs> and, I've, and I've said, well, I'm unaware that Elon Musk is paralyzed or blind, and he is not. But what he's talking about is this transhumanist belief of merging with technology in order to enhance yourself, in order to keep up with the AI and be competitive. He says this in turn could lead to breakthroughs in scientific research, innovation, and the development of solutions to complex global challenges, all things we will need to keep up with AI in the future. So here he's openly talking about the need for humanity to keep up with AI, to keep pace with artificial intelligence so that we don't get surpassed as we, as the thesis is in iRobot and in the Terminator films by AI turning against humanity. AI and humanity will be one. He says, regardless of what side you fall on regarding implementing human enhancement, much of the debate may now be muted. That's because despite social and cultural criticisms around the world, the AI's advance is likely not to be stopped. Some experts now agree that AI poses a potential threat to humanity. Again, it does not. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we get toward the end. He says, we can protect ourselves by emulating the way in which an athlete might approach the problem by improving his ability and skills to remain formidable in competitions. From addressing physical limitations to boosting cognitive abilities and emotional intelligence, technological enhancements hold the potential to revolutionize the human experience and ensure we stand the best chance to remain relevant against advancing AI. Embracing human enhancement is not just a choice, but an imperative for the continued advancement of our species. There is an urgent need to technologically enhance human beings. That need is grounded in our innate drive for progress and improvement. Our survival could be at stake. And I would say that need is grounded in our pride, which is the true threat to humanity. Because when I, so when I look at this story about Elon Musk and these, the Tesla Optimus robot, I don't think, oh, this is like iRobot or Terminator. That's not the movie it reminds me of. The movie it reminds me of would be Star Wars, right? So I see, see all these stormtroopers lined up, all in service to the evil emperor, and so I want, to, I want you to imagine for a moment a circumstance where everybody in the world gets these household robots. And the Antichrist, you know, I'm not saying this is what will happen, but it's the more likely thing to happen. The Antichrist, through AI, controls all the robots. And, you know, we've allowed into our homes things like these phones that can listen to us, spy on us. Now we're going to put actual robots that can spy on us, but could also attack us, right? <laughs> There's no threat that my, my phone's going to leap up and strangle me or do anything else to physically harm me in that way. But one of these household robots, very well a possibility. So... It mentioned in the, and I don't know that it intended to, but the army of robots that Elon Musk was creating, well, that should tell us this is a bad idea. Let's not create an army of robots that could be turned against us. 
Just earlier today, my wife was telling me about a relative of ours that had a new car and they needed to take it in for a recall over a, a part. And when they got there, the dealership already knew what the mileage of the car was. And I'm sure a whole host of other data as a result of the car being linked to the internet. <laughs> and so we know that the ev almost every device you buy today is connected to the internet. Are we to believe that these Optimus robots won't also be connected to the internet? And if they are, they can be taken over, they can be controlled, they can be used against us. Bad idea. So guys, the true threat to humanity is not uh, robots, it's not AI, it's humanity itself. It would be not some faceless computer, but it would be the Antichrist, <laughs> right? So let's, let's go back and look at this article from Prophecy News Watch. I wrote this article back in 2019 it's titled, Will Artificial Intelligence Create a Pathway to the Antichrist? And it lays out this exact scenario. It says, in the Hollywood blockbuster, The Terminator, humans create a powerful network of computers, an artificial general intelligence named Skynet. Skynet develops the ability to think for itself and decides to eliminate humans. Wars break out between or war breaks out between humans and the machines with an advanced artificial intelligence and control of the machines. Is this our future? Well, some say yes, and all over Silicon Valley, this is what they've been claiming for years. Because they, I guess they all saw this movie. <laughs> That's why they think that. But it says, for example, speaking at MIT in 2014, Elon Musk called artificial intelligence, quote, our biggest existential threat. He also said, with artificial intelligence, we're summoning the demon. In the same year, Stephen Hawking told the BBC the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. It would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. Is all this true? Is artificial intelligence humanity's greatest threat? No, in my mind it isn't. Artificial intelligence won't destroy the human race. While it's certainly possible, that doesn't make it likely. No doubt, AI will be extremely powerful. But what is greater, the creator or the created? We read that in Isaiah 45, verses 9 through 10. Well, we think we're greater than our creator, right? <laughs> and so it stands to reason that we would also think that what we create is greater than us. But we won't want it to be, right? We're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're too arrogant to allow that to happen is my point. So it says Stephen Hawking thinks that the creator, the created is greater than the creator. He foresees a future where machines advance at an ever-increasing rate while humans are left behind. But I don't think that'll happen. As humans, I don't believe we'll allow our own technology to surpass us. Our collective ego is too big. Our pride is too great. Instead, we'll simply merge with artificial intelligence. Think about it. What's more powerful, AI or humans augmented with AI? I argue it's the latter, and I would flat out say it is the latter. I think it's absurd to believe people will merge with technology. Well, we just saw somebody who openly is advocating for it, and he is not alone. It's not absurd. In fact, it's been happening for a long time. People already merge with technology to improve their health or natural abilities. Examples include pacemakers, artificial heart valves, cochlear implants, prosthetic limbs. In the near future, people will continue to merge with technology, but the technologies they merge with will be far different. They'll include devices to implant in artificial intelligence in brains and connect humans to wireless networks. AI won't be a threat to humanity, and the reason why is simple. AI and humanity 
will be one and the same. Again, I think it's a false assumption to believe that humanity and AI will remain separate and distinct entities. Now, some humans will choose to do that, to remain separate, but many will not. They will merge with technology. If artificial intelligence isn't a threat to the human race, we can all breathe, breathe a collective sigh of relief, right? Well, not necessarily. Even if it doesn't try to destroy the human race, the world won't morph into a utopia anytime soon. In a way, the doomsayers are right. AI will conquer the world and dominate the human race, but it won't do so alone. It will have help. Humans will use AI to conquer the world. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at this chapter from Racing Toward Armageddon. We read a little bit of that book earlier in the week in a video I did. It's right over my shoulder. That's what I'm referencing. So I wrote this back in 2017 is when this came out. But I want to read a couple of paragraphs from this chapter. Is technology our enemy? Because this is, this is a very important concept to grasp because that's what we're being told. The media tells us that constantly. That's what we hear. AI. AI is going to turn against us. AI is a threat. AI is the great concern. I would argue AI is just a tool. It's like a hammer or a screwdriver. There's nothing good or evil about it. But let's read this. It says, in 1811, English weavers faced the prospect of losing their jobs to machines. Some of these weavers destroyed several mechanical knitting machines in the village of Nottingham. Claiming to follow in the footsteps of a man named Ned Ludd, the protesters were given the name Luddites. This was in honor of Ned Ludd, who they said was the first to destroy such a machine in protest of his working conditions. While Ned Ludd turned out to be nothing more than a myth, it didn't matter. The protesters proudly took on their new name. In the years since, the term Luddite has become associated with a fear of new technology. It's come to mean you oppose progress. It's a term of derision. But were the Luddites right? Were mechanical weaving looms evil? No, mechanical looms aren't alive. They're objects. They aren't evil. And you know what? Other technologies aren't evil either. Computers aren't evil. Virtual reality isn't evil. Quantum computers, AI, and molecular manufacturing aren't evil. And, you know, I'll hear a lot. People will say, AI is possessed. There's no, no reason from reading the scriptures that we would expect that an entity like AI could be possessed by demons. Humans, however, humans can be possessed when we read the scriptures and we see them led by demons, possessed by demons. And so the greater concern is not the technology. The threat isn't the technology. It's us. So, so why does technology sometimes appear to be evil? The answer is simple. It's because of the end user. Technology is not evil. We are. I'm no Luddite, and you shouldn't be either. We should embrace technology. Technology is a tool. It's not good. It's not evil. But human beings, that's a different story. We are evil. Each and every one of us is a sinner. That's what Romans 3.23 tells us. And our sin is the root cause of evil. The problem isn't technology. It's our own wickedness. The darkness of the human heart is the world's number one problem. Since the Garden of Eden, every human being has been born with a sinful nature. This means we're filled with evil desires, greed, jealousy, envy, pride, and a whole host of unsavory traits. And the Bible says the source of all wars and fighting is the army of evil desires at war within us. Let's face it, we're sinners and no technology can cure us. All technology does is provide leverage. It gives us greater power. If we use that power for evil, 
It's not technology's fault. It's our fault. And that's what I've been saying for quite some time, guys. The, the concern should not be AI. The concern should be humanity. The concern is the human race. And technology is not going to be our savior. Policies, politicians are not our savior. The blood of Jesus Christ is what saves us. It's what pays the price for our sin. Guys, the human heart is filled with all sorts of wickedness, and that is simply amplified by AI and advanced technology. That's all it is, but AI is just a tool. So these ideas that we read about where, well, iRobot is going to come to fruition or the Terminator movies, you know, it's far more likely going to be like Star Wars with stormtroopers or, you know, with swarms of drones at the disposal of an evil emperor. The Bible tells us the Antichrist will have control over the entire earth. And for going on, I'm going to... Almost 25 years now, I've been pointing to AI and advanced technology as potentially playing a pivotal, critical role in how these end times prophecies in the Bible are ultimately fulfilled. And back when I was originally writing about that and talking about that, I said, well, unless they're fulfilled in another way first, eventually we're going to see these things mature, these technologies mature. And by their very nature, what's likely to happen is going to unfold in the exact same way that the Bible is telling us things will unfold. <laughs> so, so unless it happens some other way first, as we see these things mature, that's probably how it's going to happen. Well, guys, with each passing day, it seems more and more likely that this is how we see End times prophecy is going to be fulfilled. We see the AI and other advanced technologies at the disposal of the Antichrist and being used to conquer the globe, to subjugate the global, global population, to mesmerize the world, to convince people that he should be worshipped, and ultimately to wage war against the Prince of Peace himself, Jesus Christ. That's where all of this is going. Guys, we, if you, again, if you watched the Prophecy Roundtable we did on Tuesday, we pulled up an image of Starlink and the satellites in low Earth orbit that were around the globe. It showed in real time where those were located. And Scott Townsend said, guys, this is... This is it. We're seeing the beast system being constructed right in front of our eyes. That's what we're seeing. The Christians that came before us that read about these things, they, I, I don't know that they could have foreseen what we're actually seeing right now. Not that we're speculating about right now, but what we're actually seeing transpire and take place in our day and time. Guys, this is just yet another indication of the times in which we live. We see all the signs Jesus and the prophets said to look for. We're seeing them emerge and converge in our day and time. And Jesus said, when you begin to see all these things take place, know that I am near. I'm right at the door. Look up. Your salvation draws near. Guys, we're there. We're seeing these things converge. That should fill you with hope, not that we're seeing all of this take place or that we think that the world is going to be turned into this technological utopia, but that these things indicate the nearness of Christ's return. Jesus is coming back. And before we see all of these prophecies completely fulfilled in the tribulation period, Jesus is going to come back for his church in the rapture prior to the tribulation. I believe the Bible clearly teaches that. And then Jesus will return to earth at the end of the seven-year tribulation. We will be with him when he does that, and he will establish his millennial kingdom here on this earth. 
as what we're seeing in the world today indicates how close we are to that time. So take advantage of whatever time we have left to share the good news of Jesus Christ with as many people as possible. So maybe you think I'm wrong. Leave your comments below. What do you think? Is this more like Star Wars or Terminator or something totally different? Maybe I missed the boat. Maybe I'm not thinking of something that you are. If so, leave that in the comments below. But guys, I think this is a clear indication of the times in which we live, and it means Jesus is coming back. So let me know what you think. Make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, restack buttons, and God willing, I will see you on Monday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times in Bible prophecy, make sure to visit my substack at brittgillette.substack.com. There you'll find my latest videos and articles, as well as notes, where I share the latest news headlines, the articles I'm reading, and the videos I'm watching. Subscribe for free, and each new post on Substack will be sent directly to your email. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and hit the subscribe button. As an added bonus, your first welcome email will include a link to a copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.